Into the Deep Void, also known as simply Deep Void, is one of the hardest game modes in all of Cube Defense. Today I'll be guiding you through the strategy that is currently used to win the game and earn the Void Rift Tower. First of all, let's discuss what you should do before you get into the round. In order to even play Deep Void, you must at least be level 75. There can be up to 6 players in a round of Deep Void, and it's easiest with all 6. It might be possible with 5, but personally I've had no success except with 6 players. Rounds for this game mode usually last about 45 minutes, but the last thing you want is to have to leave in the middle of the round, so preferably have at least a few hours available. Like if one person has to leave, you'll probably lose the round. Luckily that hasn't ever been much of a problem for me. This also gets very laggy, so even on a good computer you should turn on reduced effects and turn off high definition explosions. And make sure you have void seals. These can be obtained by winning other nightmare modes as well as by redeeming the code VOID and DEEP VOID. Just to clarify, there's no space between DEEP and VOID, and also the codes are case sensitive. Each time you enter the round, it will use one void seal. I've also heard that if you disconnect or crash or whatever, rejoining will cost another void seal, which in my opinion is kinda dumb, but oh well. So make sure you have at least two to three void seals if possible. And lastly, what loadout should you bring? Bring Campfire, Enhancer, Sun Temple, Sun Temple MK2, Orbital Satellite, Orbital Cannon, Poseidon Tomb Paragon, Lloyd Zovuso, and Frost Rail. If you don't have Frost Rail, just bring Railgun. For the final tower slot, one player needs to bring Blade Spinner Para, and two other players need to bring Garrison. If you're not one of those three players, good towers to bring for the final slot include Star of Zovuso, Stealth Para, More para and missile launcher para as i said earlier deep void gets very laggy so unequip all skins except paragons skins will make the game even laggier and lower damage per second sometimes the group we are playing with will decide to unequip para skins as well from what i've found it really doesn't make much of a difference and also if a few towers still have skins it'll probably be fine just try to remember to unequip them before we get into the round i'll quickly clarify something finally i said that right you don't want to know how many takes i had to read that sentence i have two different rounds of deep void recorded so to help you know which one you're looking at throughout this video on the left side of the screen you'll either see Game 1 or Game 2. Game 1 was my first completion of Deep Void, and Game 2 was the second, which I also recorded. Once in the round, the player with Blade Para needs to place them in opposite corners like this, and upgrade them to sharper blades. Four other players need to place orbital satellites like this, or at least with two like this, so the last player can correctly place a campfire. Then the round can begin. The player doing the Blade Paras needs to focus only on them until they're both upgraded to Quad Blades, and the player who placed the campfire needs to focus on only that until it's upgraded to Pure Fire. After each of those two players finishes that, they can begin placing orbital satellites with everyone else. And someone should place an Enhancer after about two to three waves into the round. Whoever placed the Enhancer should upgrade that as they do OS, and whoever placed the Blades can upgrade them again at some point. And as for anyone placing and upgrading OS, what you should do is place one and then upgrade it to level three, which is Quantum Laser, and then place another one and repeat until you've placed all three OS's and upgraded them to Quantum Laser. Then max all OS's, and then you need to place and max all three Orbital Cannons and max them. For the OC's, the order you place and max them doesn't matter that much, but I recommend placing all three and then upgrading them, getting all three to the next tier before you upgrade any further. At wave 20, you'll probably be working on the orbital cannons or just about finished with the orbital satellites, depending on if you were one of the players doing the campfire enhancer or blades. At this wave, the Zymon boss will spawn. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Minecraft Ender Dragon? What we did in game 2 is what you should do at this point in the game. Someone places a campfire and upgrades it to pure fire or holy flame so that it gives shadow sight. Then everyone places lords around that campfire and upgrades them as much as they can. Zymon is a shadow boss, which is why the campfire is needed. The lords will lock onto the boss until it has been defeated then you should sell the lords. In game 1, there was some confusion of where to place the lords, so it kind of placed them in the center of the map. I made sure it was in the range of the campfire and orbitals to lock onto the boss and we were fine. By the way, lord does get shadow sight on its own at level 4, gaze of fate. So if you have enough to upgrade it that far, it doesn't have to be in range of a campfire. Again, once the boss has been defeated, sell the lords. After the first Zymod is gone, everyone is probably pretty much done placing and upgrading the orbitals. What needs to happen next is that one player places and maxes a Sun Temple MK2 in this location. In game 1, I was the person who did that, and I did so at wave 23, while in game 2, it was someone else who placed it at wave 15. Seeing as how we won both games, I don't think it matters too much, but I would say place the MK2 after the first Zymod. At some point, as everyone is doing the orbitals in the first 20 waves or so, I would suggest asking in the chat who's going to be the one to do the MK2. Great spelling, me. At wave 24, two more Zymods will spawn. One or two people should place Lords on the bosses. After those two Zymods, there's no need to place Lords on any future Zymods. Anyway, the next thing everyone needs to do is regular Sun Temples after they finish with Orbitals. Players not doing the MK2 might be able to start with regular Sun Temples before the MK2 is maxed, which is fine if that happens, but the player doing the MK2 should max it before they begin regular Sun Temples. With the MK2 maxed, everyone can place regular Sun Temples on the center platform and get the boosts from the MK2. At this point in the round, the upgrade discount is what we mainly care about. As you place and max the regular Sun Temples, make sure you sacrifice towers so the max Sun Temple deals 70 damage. For that to happen, the total temple gain of all the towers that get deleted, which are all towers within a range of 25 from the Sun Temple, 
all of your towers that is, needs to be at least 2,132. I don't know why it's such a specific number, but okay. The towers I like to sacrifice are 6 level 3 frost rails and a level 4 or level 5 campfire. Both level 4 and level 5 work. If you brought railgun instead of frost rail, then do 7 level 3 railguns and a level 5 campfire. Make sure you do not place your own sun temples too close to each other to where a sun temple will delete another of your own sun temples or sun temple mk2s, because sun temples and sun temple mk2s have negative temple gain. Spacing the temples is a little tricky if you were the one to place the first mk2, but it's possible, although you might need to place a temple next to the orbitals and sacrifice some of them, but it's fine. Just replace them. For everyone who is not the player that placed the first MK2, place your MK2 next to the first one once you finish the three regular sun temples. It's okay if your MK2 is placed next to your own regular sun temples because maxing an MK2 doesn't delete anything. From this point on, make sure you use the MK2 ability every 30 seconds. If you forget sometimes, it's okay, but it's especially important that you use it whenever there are bosses. Reminding people to do that every once in a while is also a good idea. Speaking of things to do every once in a while, check your tower menu at the bottom of the screen every once in a while and see if any of your towers have been deleted. If they have been, you'll have the tower to place, so just replace it and you'll be fine. After that, everyone needs to place and max all three tomb paras, and then just place anything you have left, like frost rails, except for lords because those will be used on bosses. One player will need to be the one who places and maxes an enhancer next to the lords whenever there's a boss. Discuss that with your team around the time you're placing the tombs. And as for the two players who brought garrison, those should all be placed in one location off to the side, boosted by a campfire and enhancer. So at this point everyone should have placed and maxed everything, or they're currently doing that, except for everyone's lords and one player's enhancer. For the rest of the game, whenever a boss spawns that is not Zymod, Gloop, or Void Arch Wizard Schlap Glob, what needs to happen is this. Find which corner the boss spawned at, and place both lords and max them. If you're the player doing the enhancer, also place and max that as well. If there's already lords placed when you place the enhancer, then you need to place the enhancer next to them and not off to the side, which you are probably going to do already, but I'll say that anyway. Then make sure you use the MK2 ability while the boss is there, that's one that's most important. After the boss is defeated, sell the lords and the player doing the enhancer sells that as well. At wave 39, make sure you don't stand on the path. Void anomalies will spawn which will kill your player if you touch them. That's not too big of a problem, but it could slow down placing the lords on the anomaly devastator boss, which in the past I've lost because of, so I'll go ahead and mention that. After there are lords on the boss, you can stand in the path again if you want. That takes us to the final wave. For the most part, it's pretty much the same as what you have been doing. Make sure to lord the void prince boss the same as you have been the other bosses. Just try not to be too nervous and place things wrong, I've lost to this boss in the past because of that, but otherwise it's pretty easy. And again, make sure you use the MK2 ability every 30 seconds. You don't need to lord the Zymod that spawns next, but you do need to lord the corrupt Zymod that spawns. And again, make sure you use the MK2 ability every 30 seconds. And here we are at the final boss, Lord Vokanol. That's how I'm pronouncing it. Deal with it if it's wrong. To start, lord the boss the same as you have been. Lord's an enhancer. Although a campfire might be a good idea too, because in both game 1 and game 2 someone placed that. So the first phase of the boss has about 300,000 health. When it reaches about a quarter of that, the boss will heal to about 1.6 million health. And the message, your towers are annoying, gah, appears on screen. You might already know this, but the final boss phase involves every tower getting deleted. But when you see this message, you're not quite at that yet. Remember to keep using MK2 ability. Again, when the boss reaches about a quarter of its health, the next phase begins. This is the final one. You'll see the message. Ah! You are not win! On screen, all the towers get deleted, and everyone's cash is also subtracted by 96%. Also, there's no way to cheese the cash subtracting. Tower cell values are set to zero, and any dropped cash gets destroyed. So after everything is gone, what you need to do is, once again, place lords on the boss with an enhancer. The player who's been doing the enhancer on other bosses will probably be the one to place it again, but because everything just got deleted, it technically doesn't matter who places it. Max the lords and enhancer, and then place an MK2 temple and upgrade it as much as you can. You might have to move the MK2 temple while the boss is on the final section of the path, like I did in game one. And hopefully Hopefully, the boss will be defeated and you'll win the round. GG. If this is your first time winning Deep Void, you'll be awarded the Void Rift Tower. Void Rift is a really good tower. It attacks by sending a sword onto cubes that does a lot of damage based on percentages of the cube's health. Tiers 3 and up have a special ability. Next attack will send an additional sword that will deal much greater damage. Tiers 4 and up are also a support tower, increasing damage, range, fire rate, and also giving stun immunity, which is very helpful. However, it only boosts towers given by a lord in the game, such as Lord Zovuso or Lord Avalan from the Winter Trial. Specifically, these are all the towers it can boost. So that's going to conclude today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to leave a like and consider subscribing. Let me know if you'd like to see other cube defense videos for me. That rhymed. I'll see you in the next video, and have a great day.